Hi everyone, again this is Miss Ella and for today's video we will be talking about our first lesson for forms of speech which is now. Welcome again to our YouTube channel where it offers free online lessons especially in English that is of course in line with our depth and curriculum that caters fun and enjoyable activities. And of course, before we start, I would like to shout out the following. So shout out to Sir Brian Fernando Garcia from Guapo, Pampanga. We also have Sis Presi Rineta from San Basilio, Pampanga. Of course, to our beloved teachers from Riverine High School, especially to Ma'am Jane Agustin, to Ma'am Perry Joy Franco, to Ma'am Bernadette Irma, and of course to Mrs. Maybelline Aurelius Rios for supporting our vlogs. And of course, to our dear students of Riverine High School, we have Miss Lau, Tom Borja, Justin Ray, and of course, Charmaine Santos. And of course, to those who shared our videos with your Facebook. And of course, if you are a newbie in our channel and want to learn a lot of things about basic grammar or you just want to review English, this video will help you a lot. And of course, don't forget to like and subscribe our YouTube channel and click the bell so that you will be notified for our next to be uploaded educational videos and so, let's start our discussion. Okay, once again, I am using screencast o to record this video. And if you are interested to know more about how to use screencast o you can browse my other videos on my YouTube account. So, our lesson will be parts of speech. And we all know that when we say parts of speech, there are a lot of them. So, we will be concentrating our first lesson for now. And of course, this presentation is made by yours truly, Ma'am Ella. That talks about grammar basics nouns, types of nouns, and example. So to get started, our target goals at the end of this lesson will be define what is a noun. Second, to give examples of nouns. We'll go to enumerate and differentiate the categories of nouns and answer the given questions correctly. And of course, number four is just optional. Now let us define what is a noun. Well, basically, if you will browse your dictionaries, you can get this definition that a noun is of any member of a class of words that typically can be combined with determiners to serve as the subject of a verb, can be interpreted as singular or plural, can be replaced with a pronoun, and refer to an entity, quality, state, action, or concept. Well, this definition is a little bit broad for those who are first-timers to uh, to to learn or exploring parts of speech so let me just define it as simple as this one so when we say noun it is a it is a word that came from the latin word nomen which means name so basically when we are talking about noun we are talking about name again when we are talking about noun we are talking about name remember that what kind of name name of a person, place, or thing. And of course, we need to take in consideration names of animal, food, entity, quality, state, action, idea, emotion, and of course, phenomenon. Well, let me give you some examples of now. So we have Jose Rizal, we also have principal, student, mother, Maria. These are all example nouns for a person. Next, we have book, shirt, appliances, towel, apple. These are all examples of uh, a thing, okay? Next, we have bird, dog, fish, cat, and lamb. Example words for an animal. Next, we have Palawan, Pampanga, New York, Japan. Provinces, these are all example words for a place. And of course, we have sadness, happiness, fear, joy, and excitement. These are all example words for emotion. So if you are a kin observer, you may observe that there are some of these words written in capital letters, just like this one, and some are in small letters. And some are uh, two words. Later on, we will be discussing that. Okay, so let us now go to the kinds of noun. We have 
eight kinds of nouns, starting with a common noun, the proper, concrete, abstract, count, mass nouns, we also have the collective, and compound. Let us first go to the first two, the common versus the proper. What is the difference of these two kinds of noun? Well, when we say common nouns, these are uh, general names. Okay? Remember the general names given to any person, place, thing, animal, event, quality, or idea. And remember that when we say common noun, the if not written at the beginning of the sentence, which is the general rule in English. And when we are talking about proper, uh, our specific names to a certain person, place, thing, animal, event, quality, or idea. And they are always written with a term. So to make it clearer, let us have our examples. For our common noun, we have man, and for the proper, we have Victor Hugo. So as you can see, based on my example, when we are talking about man, we do not know exactly who is this man. Among all the men in the world, we do not know who specifically the man is. But when we are talking about the proper, and when we say proper, we are talking about specific name. And we also have here the example, which is Victor Hugo. Meaning to say, Victor Hugo is a specific name. Okay, another example will be ocean and Atlantic Ocean. When we say ocean, there are a lot of ocean. But when we say Atlantic Ocean, this will be the specific name for an ocean. Another one is country. We all know that there are a lot of countries in the world. So we do not know exactly or specifically which country is this. Say Australia, uh, we all know that Australia is a very specific country. So next we have building. Okay, when we say building, we do not know exactly which is this building. But we pronoun Empire State Building. So specifically, it is a proper noun. And for the last one, we have language. Okay, there are a lot of language in the world. We have uh, Spanish, Greek, okay, Portuguese. But when we say proper, which is the specific name of a language, and we have here English. Okay, well, got it. Now let's try this one. Okay, answer this one if it is common or proper. I'll give you 10 seconds to answer. 10 seconds to answer. Okay, timer starts now. Okay, time's up. If you want to uh, show your answer, you can comment your answer on the comment box. Next. Okay, now uh, for the concrete and abstract, what is the difference between the two? Actually, the difference between the two is when we say concrete, uh, these are the nouns that can be observed by your five senses. Sense of sight, sense of smell, sense of a touch, etc. Okay, so like for example, uh, these are the nouns that can be seen by your two naked eyes, can be heard by your ears, can be smelled by your nose, can be touched okay, by your hands, and can be tasted by your tongue. Anything that you can perceive and you can, um, you can observe. Okay, and then for the abstract, uh, now we have um, a total opposite of complete noun. These are the nouns that you can actually use. You cannot use your five senses. Okay, abstract nouns are nouns that cannot be observed. And however, abstract nouns are those we can feel. And emotions and ideas are the major examples of abstract nouns. Okay, let me give you an example. For the complete noun, we have fish. Okay, what are the uh, present senses here? Uh, we can see a fish, we can also touch it, we can even eat it, smell it, okay? And we can also hear it when it 
swim on the it swims in the pond, right? Then we also have perfume. Uh, we can smell it, right? And then book, we can actually uh, see it, we can touch it. Radio, we can hear, we can hear it, we can also see it. And we, uh, we have here hamburger, we can uh, taste it. So those are all an example of a concrete now, now let us have the abstract. Again, when we say abstract, um, you cannot use your five senses and these are merely uh, ideas and uh, emotions and more on feelings. Okay, abstract noun are those you can feel. I'll give you an example. Imagination. You cannot see imagination. You cannot even touch it. It's just an idea that comes in your mind, okay? Next, we have sympathy. When you sympathize to a situation, to certain people, you cannot actually, or they cannot actually say it because that is a uh, emotion. Next, we have thought. Same with imagination. You cannot even see it. It's just on your mind. Next, we have loneliness. It's a matter of uh, feeling, right? And the last one is love. Oh, my favorite example. Uh, love, you cannot, you cannot see it. You cannot even eat love, right? But you can actually feel it. Actions speak louder than words. That is love. Okay? Okay, let's try to answer this one. Um, concrete or abstract? I'll give you 10 seconds. Go! Okay, that's it. If you have an answer to that question, you can comment on the comment box. Let us have the next example. We have our next kinds of noun. We have the count noun versus the mass noun. Actually, if you can uh, observe in the name itself, count noun meaning to say you can count them. And when we say mass noun, there is like there's no possibility of counting them so these are the definition when we say count nouns are nouns that can be easily be counted they are usually big or macroscopic in size so take note of the word macro meaning to say they are big enough for you to count them and when you say mass nouns these are the nouns that cannot be easily counted or have no possibility of being counted and uh, take note also that mass nouns are usually tiny or ma microscopic in size. Majority of mass nouns are liquid or gaseous state. Okay? I'll give you an example. For count nouns, we have eggs. Like one dozen of uh, eggs right? is 12. So you can count eggs. And we have here cars. Well, cars are big enough for you to count them, right? And then shoes, we also have here oranges and we also have here chairs. Especially if they are in a uh, classroom setup, you can actually uh, count them. And for mass nouns, it's a bit interesting because you cannot count them. Like for example, water. If you want to try to count uh, the water in a setup like ocean i think that is already impossible okay next we have milk again this is just like water because it's a uh, liquid in form flour you cannot uh you cannot count flour right because it's a powder uh, it is uh, in powder form next we have sugar and we have here hair okay, okay but there are some special cases for the mass nouns or non-count nouns. Mass nouns on the count nouns. Mass nouns have the possibility of being counted. This is an exemption to the rule. A mass noun can be counted if it is put in a container or any that is spacious and has an area to be occupied by the mass noun. I'll give you a perfect example like for example water and sugar that count water 
manually uh, with the use of your hands or uh, or just simply by seeing it. But if you will put water in a container with a measure of one liter, then that's the time you can count the water. It's uh, same like sugar. Uh, you can count it like one kilogram of sugar. You can count it if you will try to weigh it. Okay? So that is the exemption to the uh, mass nouns on being of nouns. Okay? I hope that is clear. Now let's try this one. Uh, try to answer which is the count noun and which is the mass noun. I'll give you 10 seconds. Okay, that's it. Time's up. If you have an answer for that question, you can comment on the, or you may comment on the comment box. Okay? Next, we have, okay, now for our next kind, we have the collective nouns. So, our definition for collective nouns, okay, here it is. Collective nouns are nouns pertaining to a certain group of persons, places, things, animals, events, quality, or ideas. So, remember the word group, okay? They are in a group. And when we say collective nouns, they are always considered as singular in number, even if it consists of two or more members. I'll give you an example. <clears throat> A band of men. Okay. When we say band, we all know that it is consists of two or more uh, member. But because we uh, uh, collect them and we name them as a band, then that is the time we consider the word band as a singular, only one. So, I'll give you an example sentence. The Ben and Ben band is my favorite. I use the word, I use the verb is because it, the band stands with only one number, okay? They are just one and B. okay? Another example is the cat or a cast of actors. Cast to say it is a group of actors or actresses consists of two or more members and cast they are a collect uh, group and that's the time we consider cast as a singular noun another one is an army of ants we also have a colony of gulls and we also have a batch of Okay, so those are all examples of a collective uh, nouns. Okay, now let's try this one. I want you to complete the sentence. Like number one, you have a, a blank of players. Number two, a blank of people. Of course, I'll give you some choices. I'll give you choices for that. Okay, 10 seconds starts now. Time's up. If you have your answer to that, you can comment on the comment box. Okay, let us have our next and last kind of noun. Compound nouns. Well, compound nouns are nouns consisting of two or more words with different meanings being combined to form a new single word with new meaning. If in the collective noun, it is a word that consists of Two or more groups in compound noun it consists of two or more words i'll give you an example we have ball and pen ball is a different thing and pen is also a different thing but if you combine them you can have a ball pen next we have c plus food is seafood three back and Ground is equivalent to background, which is another new word. Next, we have the ways. Okay, there are ways of writing a compound noun. It's actually, we have three ways of writing a compound noun. The first one is you can write it uh, in a combined form. Words combined are written without uh, without space in between of them. 
Okay, no space. I'll give you an example. Cow and boy will be cow, uh, cowboy without space. Any space. Without any space needed. And of course, we have sunrise and skateboard. So these are also considered com uh, compound words but in a combined form without space. The second one is the hyphenated. Words combined are written with the punctuation hyphen, this one, in between of them. Okay, I'll give you an example. Mother-in-law, great-grandmother, and runner-up. So, these are all written in hyphenated form. Okay, I hope you got that one. And number three, we have the separate them. Words combined are written with space. I'll give you an example. We have dining room. Dining plus room without, or I mean with space. Ice cream and here we have maid of honor which is three words and considered as a compound noun. Now, let's try this one. Tell if it should be written in one word, hyphenated or separated. Okay, I'll give you 10 Seconds. Go. Okay, time is up. If you have a, an answer to that, you can comment on the comment box. Okay, that's it. That ends our presentation for our lesson for today. But before we end our lesson, there is a one word in English that takes the place of a noun, saving the need for you to write the noun twice. And that will be our next topic for our next vlog. Hoping that you learned something in our lesson for this video. Again, I am Miss Ella from Bepura National High School. See you again in our next lesson.